You ever wonder why some people and nations are more healthy than others? It's bigger than just cells and germs. It's about social relationships and institutions, such as families, national policies, and global economic forces, and how they promote or undermine the health of populations. This is social epidemiology. It is a perspective on health that examines how social systems enhance or inhibit health. Hello, my name is Michael Oakes. I'm an Associate Professor of Epidemiology at the University of Minnesota and co-director of the Minnesota Census Data Research Center. In this course, we will take an interdisciplinary, multi-level perspective on what makes people and populations healthy and consider the so-called fundamental causes of disease and health disparities across recognizable social groups. We approach this topic from a public health perspective, not a biomedical perspective. Simply, the public health perspective focuses on disease prevention. The medical focuses on treatment. We will investigate questions such as, why does malaria kill people in sub-Saharan Africa and not Canada? Why does a 15-year-old boy in Harlem have a 30% chance of reaching age 60 when most of us have a 97% chance? Is it better to have a sewer system or your own personal doctor? What changes could be made to enhance the health of populations? This course is a blend of existing evidence of health disparities, research methods, and theories of social epidemiology. Throughout this course, we will develop a deep appreciation for how social arrangements impact the health of populations, critically evaluate the scientific and popular health literatures that address the causes of disease, learn how to measure key social drivers such as race and socioeconomic status, learn about research strategies that help us answer critical questions for policymaking. My goal is to help you recognize that health is more than a simple function of germs, genetics, and behaviors. I want to convince you that health is a collective action problem, that only when we consider social arrangements do we get a complete picture of what makes people and populations thrive.